Kia EV6 GT versus Model Y Performance. Zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds with 576 horsepower. Zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds with a 303 mile range. This has a 206 mile range. Today I'm going to do a review and drive of both of these. We're gonna start with the exterior, move to the interior, take them for a ride and come to a final verdict of which one of these you should buy. Now, starting on the exterior of this, the sportiness, in my opinion, EV6 GT all the way. Now, they both do have colored brake calipers. Over here, these neon six-piston brake calipers, they are huge. And then over here, we have these red Tesla performance brake calipers. You'll also notice these are not the performance wheels. The owner of this car just switched these out. Those are the induction 20 inch wheels that comes on the long range. So this is a performance, I promise. He just switched the wheels out. He also put some spacers on the rear, so that is crazy looking. Starting with the exterior of the car, we gotta go to the frunk. The frunk is important. Let's open up the Tesla first. So traditional on the Kia, just pull this open in the Tesla, it's software and we'll get this opened up here. Okay, like I said, if you wanna store your cell phone in the frunk, there you go, you can do it. So not much going on there. To open up the frunk in the Tesla, all you do is click this button here and it pops open. We installed a uh, aftermarket motor that actually lifts this up. So that's not standard with Tesla yet on the frunk, but you can see massive storage area there to hold a bunch of things in. So Tesla wins in terms of storage up front and Tesla also wins in terms of storage in the rear, which I'm about to show you. Now to open this up, there's a little button down in there that you hit and that pops open. You can also open it with a key. So the Model Y has a higher roof line, so you get a little bit more room this way. Whereas here, it's more sloped. It's sitting kind of lower. You can see kind of the roof line here of the car. So the Model Y sits up higher. And also, there is no storage underneath here in the Kia. Just for a couple items there, you could probably put your charging cable down there. Over to this Model Y, we have the full under storage compartment there. I mean, that is a massive space that you have to store whatever you want. Additionally, you have two deep holes here that you're able to store more things. Seats fold flat on both of them. The Tesla has camp mode, so you're able to go into camp mode, run the AC all night, stay in your car comfortably, whereas this does not have that feature. So exterior wise, you know, you could say probably that the EV6 is a sportier looking car. It has more flow to it, the very good wheels. I love the neon brake calipers. And I also like this line right here, how this hangs over the edge and gives it even some more uh, sportiness. The EV6 also does not have a fully panoramic roof. And the more I drive Teslas and the more I drive other cars that don't have the fully panoramic roof, I'm actually starting to lean towards, I wish we had an option to have a just a covered roof in Teslas because it, it's so much heat, especially in Arizona. It's a ton of heat and uh, it's just kind of nice to have it closed off. I just wish it was an option, that's all. You can see you always have a sunshade in here. In the summer, all Tesla owners are like finding sunshades to put on this beautiful glass roof. The other thing you should note is when you sit in a Tesla for the first time, you're gonna look in that glass roof and go, oh, that's so cool, that's really cool. And then you're gonna own the car and drive it and you're never gonna look at it again. So I just wish Tesla, if anyone from Tesla Design is watching this, just consider putting a covered roof on it just because I think you could make the car lighter. You could probably make it cheaper. I, is probably metal's probably cheaper than glass, I would think. <laughs> what do I know? So it's nice that the Kia uh, has that option. So now that we're onto the interior of the Model Y, let's do a comparison of the two interiors. But before we get to the interior, a message from Chicago Chest Fund, which is the sponsor of today's video. The ad's only a minute. Check this out. You're not gonna wanna miss this opportunity to win your very own Tesla and be able to choose between a Model S, X, 3, or Y, or even the upcoming Cybertruck. If you don't want any of those, you can also just go with $50,000. Normally tickets are $100 each, but if you use code Jeebs, you get $25 off of two tickets or more. This giveaway supports the Chicago Chest Fund and all proceeds are helping the less fortunate with food, clothing, job searching, and other needed expenses to live a more comfortable life. Not only do you have the chance to win a Tesla, but right now they're running the early bird specials. So if you purchase two tickets or more before July 11th, you'll be entered into both the Tesla raffle and the Tesla tequila raffle. What I really like about this raffle is it's limited to 9,999 tickets, so going into the giveaway, you know exactly what your odds are. 
So in summary, use code Jeebs, that will save you $25 off two or more tickets. Enter in before July 11th, so you are also entered into the early bird special. And the raffle ends August 20th, 2023, or when tickets sell out, whichever comes first. So good luck to all of you, and thank you to Chicago Chest Fund for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. So as you can see here, my beautiful legs. Model Y rear leg room is very good. You can see on the bottom here, ton of space for your feet because of these stands that the seat sit sits up on. So you have that, you have this little pocket here, but very simple overall in the rear interior. Now I'm six feet tall, so we'll go into the front seat to make sure that's adjusted as I would sit. And this is, this is significantly further back than I would sit. Normally there's a little bit of room in front of my kneecaps, but even so with this as far back as it is, I still have comfortable room back there. Now let's jump into the key and see what that interior is like in the back. All right, we're gonna get this frunk closed up. So again, I'm pressing there and it closes it up. If you guys wanna watch that video, I'll have it linked in the description of how we installed that part. All right, so into the Kia, we'll go into the driver's side because I have the driver's seat in a comfortable position. In the back of both of these cars, the floor is flat. So that's good. There are no flaps on the back of the seats here. It does have two USB-C charging cable ports and does, the Model Y does as well. Nothing here. Again, these are sports seats. So we have almost light bucket seat in this, which is really cool as far as being enthusiast focused. You also have the Alcantara centers and you have plenty of room back here. Seating position is different though. You're sitting lower. This row reclines back. It also reclines back in the Tesla. In order to recline it back, you grab this right here. Boom, here's their most upright position. And there's like three, four stages of reclination. And there we are, and you can see we have lighting back here, closed roof, moon roof right there. So that's all very nice. I also really like that the air vent in the rear is right here. This comes to a better place for me. And if there's only one pe person in the back seat, you can kind of aim both of them. I just feel like this, is a more effective area than this, which is where they are in the Tesla and in most cars in general. So the back seats are very comparable. It does have heated seats in the rear as well. So the Tesla also has heated seats in the rear. So that's good. So we're, you can see we're very uh, equal. They both have excellent sound systems. This has the Meridian surround sound system, whereas Tesla just has its own bespoke system, which is, it's very, very good. So we're, we're looking, damn, we're like a tie ball game right here. In the door pockets here is a, is a nice material. I don't know what this is called. Got a, some Alcantara slash suede here, and then just some kind of plastic along that portion of it. So if we move into the driver's seat now, and just let's look at the exterior again. I mean, just these lines right here, these cuts in the spoiler to, uh, route some air through there. It's just a well done car. This line right here with the piano black mirrors. This is very special over the entry level model, the wind model, which starts at around $43,000. This is $61,000. The Model Y performance is $54,490. So this is about $6,000 less. It gets more range. It doesn't get quite as good performance in terms of zero to 60 times. But again, I mean, if you're driving these around the city and you want the faster one, maybe one that's a little more enthusiast focused with these front bucket seats, this may be for you. I guess we're not at the verdict yet. We're not at the verdict. Let's see what we got here. So this is the brightness on your display here. As you can see, it says illumination there and we're turning that up. Uh, this button opens your charge port. So we'll press that. And the charge port is right over here. So that's what that looks like. It's actually a very convenient location. You pull in your garage, you plug it in right here. The charge port on the Model Y is right on this side on the driver's side of the car. That's the difference between the two there. Closes with that button. Nice and clean integrated. You wouldn't even know where it's at. You have to kind of, I always have to get out of the car and like wander on these press cars. Like, where is it at? You have uh, this to open the trunk. This is the e-brake and this is stability control totally off. When you put it into GT mode and hit this button, um, it takes stability control off, as you can see right there. So the other thing, this is maybe a good thing or a bad thing. Every Tesla Model Y, whether you get the base model or the top of the line performance model, the interiors are the same. You wouldn't be able to know, if you just plopped me in one, I wouldn't be able to tell you if I'm in a performance model. This Kia is not like that. You have this neon stitching. You have these special seats, again, with more neon stitching and piping along the sides here. The whole cockpit is kind of aimed towards me. You have a start button here. 
heated seats, heated steering wheel. Beautiful display that wraps around here. As far as the display goes and the technology, Tesla wins there. This can receive over the air updates. Teslas are more meaningful updates. It really changes it, whereas these updates on the Kia are not gonna be um, as plentiful and probably as meaningful yet. Eventually they will be, it's not quite there. In order to put the car in gear, you have this little knob right here. You just twist it uh, either way. To put it in park, you just go like this. And I actually really like this feature, the park. It's just, you get used to that quickly. It's convenient, you tap it, you're good to go. You have wireless charging right here. I think it's vented for uh, cooling on your phone, so that's good. You have USB-A, USB-C, you have, again, more USB-C, geez, got, got them all over the place. You have that, and then you do have this open storage space down here, which I really like. I like that they're opening up the middle of these cars, just finding more ways to store things or just have more open air inside the cabin. So, so that's very nice. Again, the switches here, all standard and everything. Piano black here, which I'm not a big fan of. But then again, this material with Alcantara, Meridian sound system, uh, looks really nice. To open up the sunshade, tap that right there lightly, and then it just opens that. Yep, and then if you tap it again, opens the whole thing up. So you have that as well. I, that's a really nice feature. Just nice to be able to automatically close it off. Whereas the Tesla, you gotta grab this sunshade and put it up there. It's just kind of a nuisance. So it's nice that this is all automated. So now that we've covered that, this is a sportier interior. It's more driver focused. These seats, not as comfortable as the Teslas. So, you know, and, and the other thing is like, are you really gonna take this to the track? You, you might be able to get it to the track, but what are you gonna do once you get there? Wait 48 hours to charge it, unless they have a high speed charger. So these are some things to think about as far as like the actual use case of the car. We've covered the interior. Now what you guys wanna see is driving the car. I'm gonna drive them back to back so I'll have a really good feel of just the difference between the two. So I'm gonna hop in the Tesla first and then we'll end the video with me driving the Kia. All right, so Model Y performance. One of the main things people talk about is uh, ride quality. Now, I, they have improved drastically. The new ones that are coming out have a different spring rate. They have a much softer suspension, so it's been adapted and it is better. It is comparable to the EV6 GT. Where the EV6 GT has an advantage is it has an adaptive suspension. So when you put it in different drive modes, the suspension changes stiffness. So it is really nice that it has that. I wish Tesla's had adaptive suspensions. The S and the X have an air suspension, so you can adapt them. This, it's fixed, it's simple. Everything in here is simple. So pedals and steering, you can see we have uh, acceleration is chill or sport. And then it also has track mode, which is a software upgrade. Really cool, but this, and he also put the Tyne uh, shocks on the rear of this. I have that video linked in the description as well that we did. We've driven 100,000 Teslas at this point. We're gonna make this brief. The software is the huge advantage with Tesla and also the charging network. Uh, they've been making batteries and EVs longer than anyone. So in my opinion, they are the best at it. They're the best at doing the things that are all covered up and underneath. You may think, oh, the Mustang Mach-E looks better or the ID4 looks better but the technology and the packaging in the Teslas is far, far advanced from that. And you can see that in how the frunks of these are, where this has a frunk and plenty of room, whereas those have more like traditional cars and having cooling lines and all of that type of stuff. The driving of the Tesla isn't as sporty because the seats aren't as aggressive. It doesn't have that button to change drive modes right on the, the steering wheel, which I really like. Having that GT button and then having an individual button where you can customize a setting to be exactly how you want it to be is a unique feature. Now, in here you can have chill, sport, you can change your, your steering weights to three different weights. You have track mode, things like that, which let, which let you drift in the Model Y, which is very cool. So you do have certain modes that you can customize as an enthusiast. It's, it's very good, it's simple, and you're getting a lot more range out of the Model Y. The, the 206 miles out of that Kia, I mean, it, it does, it, both cars are ridiculously fast. The Kia has more power, it's a little quicker, but I don't know that you're actually gonna notice the difference between the speed of both of these on the, the road. It's just a really uh, nice package in here. This infotainment system's constantly updated, so that's good. The big advantage of this over the Kia, in my opinion, is just the range and the charging network, whereas 
you know, the Tesla charging network is not open to all third party vehicles yet. And the other thing is that the charging network that is open, there's only like 15 uh, supercharger locations that are giving access uh, with the Magic Dock. So that camera's too hot. I'll tell you what, GoPros are garbage. If, if GoPros are garbage. So we'll let that take a break because, you know, and then it'll want a participation trophy later. Yeah, so this is well packaged, smooth, more range, less power, not as fast to 60, not as many drive modes but has more storage, has the uh, panoramic roof, all those things like that. So now that we've briefly driven the Model Y, I've done other reviews of this in the past, let's hop over to the Kia and drive that because that's not as familiar to kind of summarize our thoughts in driving the two back to back. All right, Kia EV6 GT, Civic Type R for sale. Get on that GT, but boom, I didn't even hit the throttle differently there. So when you hit when you go into GT mode, all right, I'm gonna hold the throttle steady, okay, steady. Boosts itself forward. It's, it just makes it way more responsive. It adds a bunch of extra horsepower. Um, and it's just cool to have that at the touch of a button. If you touch the, the button again, it goes into individual mode and you have to configure that to exactly how you want it. The other difference is this has an EV start button. So you have to hit start. Personally, I like when you get in an EV and it's just ready to go. Foot on the brake, put it in gear ready to go. Uh, so you do have to start it in here. The other thing, so we'll put it in the drive mode is in normal right now. So you have eco, normal, sport, GT, and your individual mode. So five different drive modes as compared to the Tesla has fewer drive modes. That when you put the turn signal on, you have this pops up that shows you your blind spot. The Tesla also has that feature. That was a software update at one point. So my car did not come with that. And now it has that feature. And that's what I'm talking about when the when I say the the power of Tesla software like what people are like oh what's that mean it's like well that's a real life example of that my car didn't come with a feature that it now has through software so back into GT mode because like, that's what this car is all about it's insanely fast you don't need this power at all you want this power and despite it having only 206 miles of range which is abysmal that's how the teacher used to describe my test scores she's like Ben you studied for this and this is abysmal and I'd go, I don't know what that means either. So is that good or bad? So uh, ride quality is very good. Even in GT mode, it's stiff, but we'll get out of GT mode and go to Eco. As you adjust the drive modes, it reflects your range that you're going to get in that drive mode, currently showing 135 miles of range. It's just, it's not good. And these cars can actually charge fairly quick, I think up to 250 kilowatts. It says 800 volts, but I think that's a misprint in their marketing. They say 350 kilowatt charging speed, but there's, they're, they're not capable of that. It's just a misprint. So uh, they can charge as, just as fast as the Model Y. It's just a matter of finding chargers for Electrify America that are actually working. And then on top of that, there are actually a 350 uh, kilowatt chargers or 250 kilowatt chargers. So that's the problem is it sounds good in practice, but when doing it in the real world, the charging network is bad. It's just bad. It's, it's unreliable and makes road trips scary. Now for me, I'm making videos, okay? So I'm just having fun and making videos on this. You, you guys are mostly in real life. I'm not in real life. So you guys have to go on vacation, you have vacation hours, and you don't wanna be screwing around with chargers, uh, not knowing your family, your wife already doesn't like you. And now you're making her wait behind a Walmart to try and charge your $61,000 Kia EV6 GT. And that's not gonna go over well with your wife or the kids. So on a road trip, you gotta go with a Tesla. In my opinion, unless you're really into it, you're really comfortable with the charging network and you know what you're getting into. Then fine, go ahead, you can do that. I'm just trying to make give you an informed decision. But now if you want something to rip around town that will be cheap to maintain, really quick and different, because there's a ton of Model Ys on the road. They have to have made over a million of them, I would think. So there's a lot of Model Ys on the road. You're gonna see them everywhere, and this is different. It, it's more driver focused. Um, it has adaptable suspension. You have these special seats. It looks incredible coming up the road on you. It looks like a Ferrari 458, almost. I know I'm stretching that. I know, that's, that's tough. What I just said is brutal. Uh, it does have an exotic look coming up the road because the headlights are very different. Sleek roof. This thing's well built and, and Hyundai, Kia, Genesis are building great EVs right now. That Genesis GV70 electric that I drove 
was amazing. It was so comfortable, it's same power as this, but just luxury features and comfort like you cannot believe. And I really enjoyed driving that. And like I've said, EVs need to be not forced on us by the government. EVs need to be something that we want to drive. So manufacturers need to build special cars like this that go, oh, you know what? I want to drive that as opposed to getting a BMW X3 M, which has performance like this does, but doesn't have the efficiency that this does and costs $20,000 more than this does. So you have to pull customers from performance gas cars into these EVs and make them fun to drive. And the government can't just say, oh, by 2035, all EVs and they're just, we're all driving around Chevy Bolts, more depressed, right? So Kia, nice job on this. Now, the verdict. Let's review. The Model Y's advantages are more storage, better charging network, better technology, probably slightly more comfortable on the interior simply because of these seats in the front. We'll give them equal on the back. Infotainments are both very good. This has Apple CarPlay that Model Y does not. So there's that. Now the benefits of the Kia looks, I think it looks sportier. It looks also very different. It's gonna stand out. Has more aggressive seats, has more drive modes, has an adaptive suspension. So you're asking yourself at this point, well, wh which one do I get? Well, the Kia is $6,000 more. And one of the most important things when buying an electric car, if it's your only car, is the charging network. And Tesla has a better charging network. So it's something to consider. If you're gonna be driving around town, go with either. If you're gonna be having one as your only car and you need to do road trips and make sure you can go anywhere with it, you have to go with the Tesla right now. These are both extremely fun. Now, if you wanna watch an in-depth review on the Tesla Model Y versus the Ionic 5, you're gonna to to click this video right here. That'll really help you out in making that purchasing decision. Shares a lot of the features that the EV6 does.